You won't believe the one amazing feature that Tesla has, but you can only use if you have premium connectivity. And also, I was super shocked to find this on the Tesla website regarding premium or standard connectivity. So make sure to keep watching to the end of the video to see what I found. First, usually when you get a new Tesla, you get one year of premium connectivity for free. After it's around $9.99 a month or $100 a year. If you have Tesla credits, you can also redeem a free year for 2,500 credits. With premium connectivity, you get to use things you never realized you needed. However, most things can be done without it. Let's first talk about entertainment, music streaming. Wait, let me rephrase that. Tesla music streaming, not Spotify, Slacker, Apple Music. Now, do you need it just for Tesla music? Probably not. I have two Teslas and I've had premium connectivity on one for four years. The second one just expired maybe two or three months ago. And honestly, the music is not the latest and greatest. They replay a ton of songs. It's so much easier just to connect your phone to Bluetooth and stream from your phone instead. Now, one thing you can do in your Tesla that most other car brands can't do is watch things like Hulu, Netflix, Twitch, YouTube, Disney Plus in your car when you're just trying to hang out or even when you're charging. If you do not have premium connectivity, it will not work and you cannot access this feature. But one huge workaround is to use your phone as a hotspot. Then you can use Netflix, YouTube, all that fun stuff without paying any extra. Now I know a lot of people with issues of setting the hotspot up, so make sure you guys stay tuned to the end of the video and I'll explain it all later. So again, premium connectivity is not really needed so far. And the next one which uses premium connectivity is karaoke. To this day, I've never used it, but I can see it being useful and fun if you have kids. It has songs you can sing along to while driving, and you can also use this feature while in drive with your hotspot. Just make sure to enable the setting where the tester remains connected to the hotspot while in drive. This is kind of a cool feature if you have kids and you're just parked while charging and you want the kid to just listen to music and have some fun with some sort of karaoke type of thing. So I guess it is fun in that sense. However, again, you can still use your hotspot. Now overall, as far as entertainment goes, that's pretty much the only reason to have premium connectivity. So it doesn't seem worth it, right? Let's talk about Tesla's navigation. Now Tesla's navigation is pretty good. It knows exactly where your car is and it does a good job of routing for battery efficiency. Without premium, I thought you don't get any traffic access so the navigation won't know to reroute you if there's traffic and all that stuff. However, it looks like with standard connectivity, the Tesla will still route and avoid traffic, but you just won't know where as you can't see it on the maps. So the navigation will still work. You can also easily pull up Google Maps to make sure as well on your phone. This is a hit or miss on whether premium is needed, but you honestly don't really need it for that as well. Another one that is cool to have and it helps me kind of be more aware of my surroundings is visualizing the area where I'm going to with satellite view. It's good to see, but again, you could just put it up on your phone and honestly, I wouldn't get premium connectivity just for that. What about you guys who only uses satellite mode? I mean, it's a cool feature, but not really necessary. Now, all the point of interest as well as superchargers is still on the screen as well as the information that you will get regardless of paying for premium. Now, next one is software updates. You do not have to worry if you do not have premium connectivity with software updates as most of these updates are done by Wi-Fi anyways. And if it's a very urgent recall, they will do it over the air through cell service regardless if you have standard or premium connectivity. And again, if you aren't near any sort of Wi-Fi, you can easily just use your phone as a hotspot to download the software. So, so far it's definitely not worth it to upgrade to premium, but I wanna talk about why I'd pay for it for my own peace of mind and that is sentry mode. Sentry mode is Tesla's dash cam while it's parked and no, the sentry mode won't stop working if you do not have premium connectivity. However, one amazing feature of Tesla sentry mode is while it's in park, you can view all the cameras on your phone in real time. Also, this came in super clutch in our two week trip to Singapore and the Tesla was parked at the airport. It was just a huge sigh of relief and peace of mind to be able to see the car still there and see all the surroundings of the car like 10,000, 100,000 miles away. 
literally I went into the app, I went to live camera. I was able to view the interior camera just to maybe see if there was a window that was broken. I checked the side cameras to see if there was any glass on the floor. I didn't see anything, but it is nice to know that it is there. It's not something I use every day, but it's nice to use when I need it. And another neat feature is Tesla's dog mode. You can keep your dogs in the car and not worry about anything with the climate and all that stuff. If you have premium connectivity, you can actually view the cameras on the inside so you can see what your dogs are up to, making sure they're safe. However, if you don't have premium connectivity, you can't view any of that footage. So I think for most people, premium isn't worth it. I mean, you can get Spotify premium for a dollar more. I will say that the cell service is stronger with the Tesla. I mean, they must probably use like maybe a stronger antenna or something. So in certain areas where I don't have any cell reception, the Tesla has at least one bar, so that's cool. But for me personally, the view live camera feature is just awesome. It makes me wanna keep paying for it. And also it is kinda nice to see where the congestion is on navigation. But again, it still reroutes you automatically no matter what. But here's something super hidden I found on the Tesla website that nobody talks about. All vehicles come with standard connectivity and that's just the navigation feature. However, and let me know if I'm wrong, it says, quote, standard connectivity is included in your vehicle at no additional cost for eight years, beginning on the first day your vehicle is delivered as new by Tesla or the first day it is put into service. Huh? This essentially means that after eight years of owning a Tesla, you'll lose the standard connectivity features. So you won't be able to use navigation at all. It does say any vehicle before July 20th of 2022 will get standard connectivity for life. So anyone in 2030, if you guys find this video, comment on what happens when you lose standard connectivity. Like do you just lose access to everything? You can't see any superchargers? Like what, go, what, what happens? I don't know. Now let's quickly talk about how to set up your hotspot for your Tesla. Now we keep talking about the hotspot. I've gotten lots of people telling me it doesn't work. I'm going to quickly go over it now with you. So first off, make sure you have a hotspot plan with your cell phone service provider. Test it on a computer or a laptop or another phone first. Make sure it works, no problem. Second, make sure your hotspot is actually on. For me, I'm using an iPhone. Now we want to start with a fresh, restart a car, it honestly makes your life easy. So hold down both scroll wheels on the wheel and the Tesla will restart. You'll know what you're starting because the screen will go black, you'll get a nice Tesla logo and everything kind of restarts. Next up, go to your Tesla screen and on the right side, you'll see the cell service bars or Wi-Fi. Find your hotspot, wait for a second while it finds it and connect to it and it should work after you input the password. You may also have to restart your phone. If it still doesn't work, try to restart the test up one more time, make sure it's connected, and make sure you check off that you want it to stay connected while in drive if you don't have premium connectivity and you wanna use certain features. So there you have it, guys. Hope that video helped you. Are you guys paying for premium connectivity? Do you guys honestly think it's worth it? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you guys next time.